try it again. Let's try it again. Happy Super Sunday! You know, for his glory, we're always doing something new, cutting edge, because that's the way we roll. Will you tell your neighbor, say, that's the way we roll here at For His Glory. That's the way we roll. And today, uh, we're going to, before I come up and minister, have a little quick demonstration of what you might do when you go home and plan for the Super Bowl and say, I have nothing to fix. What can I do quickly? Somebody say quickly. quickly. Say suddenly. suddenly. Things appear. And so today I have, you know, as we kick off black history, I've got a contemporary woman who is making history. In 2019, Lisa Gibbons. Today, as we celebrate black history, we want to recognize a woman who is making history right now in 2019. Lisa took a leap of faith in 2004 to start her own personal chef company, a gourmet away. Since that time, Lisa has been awarded the top home chef in Denver award. Lisa has also been recognized by the United States Personal Chef Association, USPCA, as Personal Chef of the Year. And she appeared recently in a segment on Fox 31 television showcasing quick and simple Super Bowl recipes. Now, since the Saints and the Cowboys robbed, we were robbed. We're robbed. <laughs> the Saints were robbed. Lisa is here with us today. And uh, let me just say this, because this is important. Last year, Lisa was Lisa's best year ever. Wow. Best year ever. And Lisa is since 2004, so that's been about 14, 14 years 14 that she's been in business. And uh, last year was her best year ever, and she is looking forward to expanding her business to help others in the industry start their own personal chef businesses. Lisa has always loved to cook, and now that passion has met up with purpose, the sky is the limit. So, real quickly here, Lisa, you're going to show us what we can do uh, when we go home this afternoon, real quickly, because we, we're not ready. I we're know. just not ready. I know. <laughs> so what do you have here for us? Okay, so we're going to do a quick recipe. On uh, Wednesday when I did the promo with um, Fox 31, I had to feature pickles called McClure's Pickles. Mm -hmm. So I decided to incorporate it in a different rec recipe this morning. And so um, Super Bowl Sunday is probably the second largest day for eating behind Thanksgiving. Wow. Okay, so when you go to Super Bowl parties, or if you have your own, just remember that try to have some balance. People on average eat about 2,400 calories from the start of the Super Bowl to the end of the Super Bowl. <laughs> so when you are looking at choosing from the table, please make sure you pick some, some really healthy things. So I'm going to okay. have... Um, uh, Elder D to hold this microphone for me. And what are you going to do, Lisa? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different version of a guacamole. Ah. Okay? Now, you can always have your guacamole with chips, but you better consider doing it with also some vegetables as well. So I have something new that I'm trying out. I saw this online, but this is a quick way to get your uh, guacamole out of the shell. Okay. okay. So I'm going to sit it right here. All right. Have you done this one before, Lisa? I did it this morning. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I've already cut the guacamole, so all you're going to do is just push it. Oh. Push it down. Okay. okay. We like that. Push it down. We like that. Okay. Okay. Just really, really simple. And it comes out nice pieces. You don't have to worry about mashing it or yeah, anything. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. All right. And then this is the pickle relish. Okay. So this is the relish from McClure's Pickles. I'm going to pour a little bit of that in there. And those pickles are good. I tried them. We have some apples. 
Okay, Granny some Smith apples. apples. Different. Huh. For Cilantro. guacamole. Okay. You can put anything in your guacamole, especially more veggies. and Kind of so like is, chicken salad. Exactly. Some okay. jalapenos. Now okay. A little bit of salt. Uh-huh. And then we have a little bit of white pepper mm. and a little bit of lime juice. Ooh. I'm going to just mix it up really quick. Uh-huh. Okay. And then put a little bit of Fresno peppers on top. Fresnos. Fresnos. So okay. A little spicy. I kept the seeds in it Fresnos to get a little okay. kick. Uh -huh. All right, and so this is the one that I finished, and so. Um, so Lisa, what about what? What's oh, this? Radishes. 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 Okay, so you're gonna put some radishes yeah. in there. We're okay. Put a little radish okay. in there. I have that all in this one. This was all prepared. Uh huh. Elder, do you want to try? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> in case you didn't hear me, I said Not yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Deanna, tell us what you think. I might need another taste just to make sure. Okay, all right, give her another <laughs> taste, Lisa, so we can make sure that it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's on here. It's good, all right. So, this afternoon, when you go home, how many of you have already planned out your party, your Super Bowl party? Okay, y'all looking super, y'all can go by their house. They've already cooked. How many of you have not prepared anything? Go home and try Chef Lisa's recipe for guacamole. Come on, let's hear it for her. Thank you, Chef Lisa. Awesome. <laughs> Woo. All right. I mean, look how quick that was. I think I might go home and try that for real. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet as I welcome our own Pastor Anita Jones. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, give God glory in the house. Hallelujah! Yeah! Thank you, Elder Glenn. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. You got your Bibles, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, however you access the Word of God. And I want you to lift them up real high in the air. And I want you to repeat after me. Say it like you mean it. Say, this is my finest hour. And I am graced. For every challenge, for every test, for every situation that comes my way, I am even graced for my next level. I am unstoppable and I am dangerous because of my ability. All eyes closed every head bowed father in the name of jesus i lift my voice to thee god there's no other god like you you are the creator of all things you know us through and through father you know our going out and our coming in and so today father because you so carefully watch over us we want to say thank you lord god as i stand before your people today I thank you for another day that you give me clarity of mind, clear articulation of my speech. Father, I thank you for a clean heart. God, renew a right spirit in me and in the congregation. And God, prepare us for the new things that you are doing, fresh new things in our lives. And God will forever give your name glory and honor because you alone deserve it. And those that agree say amen, amen. and amen. Shake somebody's hand. Let them know you're glad to see them in God's house. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm so glad he makes all things new. 
Praise God. He's not just the God of a second chance, but he's a God of a fresh start. Somebody needs a fresh start. Amen. And God is a God of a fresh start. Well, how's everybody? Is anybody amazing sitting next to you today? Look to your left and to your right and see if there's anybody amazing that's sitting next to you. Hallelujah. And if there is, say, you're amazing. Amen. Just thought I'd tell you, you're simply amazing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is there anybody sitting next to you that's just been rubbing you the wrong way? Don't tell them. <laughs> Don't say nothing. <laughs> Sometimes it's best just to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. We have a couple more shout-outs that we're going to get to immediately after the service. But right now, I want you to open up your Bibles with me to the book of Joel. The book of Joel, chapter 2. The book of Joel, chapter three, 2. And we're going to look at verses 23. The book of Joel. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. And we're going to look at verses 23 and through 27. The book of Joel, chapter, what did I say? 23. And we're going to read, I didn't say 23, I said 2. 2. See, y'all not paying attention to me this morning. I don't think I'm paying attention to myself. And we're going to look at verses 23 through 27. And then I want you to read it and let that word minister to you. Are you ready? All right, I want, you, I want to hear you. Let me hear you read. Uh huh. For he has given you the former rains moderately. Uh huh. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. Uh huh. And the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. Yes. Thank you, Lord. What a promise. What a promise. What a promise. This morning, I want to teach once again from the subject of I will restore unto you the years. I will restore unto you the years. While we were fasting and praying in January for 21 days, God spoke some things to my heart, and he gave me a prophetic word for the church. For those of you that fast with us every year or who has even fasted with us before, you know that we always seek God and we look to God for direction for the new year. We want to know what God is speaking to the church so we can follow after the heart of God. See, there are things you want to know what to look for in the new year. Amen. And so God spoke to my heart and he gave me a prophetic word for the church that I shared on last week that really seemed to resonate with the congregation on last week. And for me personally, it just set my soul on fire. When the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, daughter, I want you to tell the church that I want to do for you in one year, in 2019, 
what it would take you five years to accomplish. He said, amen. He said, to tell the church that I want to do for you in 2019, in just one year, what it would take you five years to accomplish on your own. And then the Holy Spirit went on to say that I'm going to restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, all those areas of your life, life where you have suffered loss, the areas of your life where you have had waste and harm and discomfort, time eaten up through pain and mistreatment and delays and grief. How many of you know that grief can eat up your time? Delays can eat up your time. Pain can eat up your time because you spend your time uh, worried about certain things. And God says, I'm going to restore lost time, time and, and, and money that you have lost. Amen. Love. Holy Spirit said, I will redeem the time. But then he went on to say to me, he said, but be careful how you spend your time because time is valuable. He went on to say to be careful who you allow to waste your time. Be careful who you try to fit into your inner circle. How many of you know that not everybody belongs in your inner circle? Amen. And I don't know about to anybody uh, else, but, but his word, God's word, truly resonated, uh, resonated with me, uh, Pastor Jewel, because God doesn't want us trying to force people, situations in our life. In other words, he's saying, don't try and, re and force relationships in your life that I'm not in. God is not in every relationship that we have, amen? Whether it's a friendship, a romantic relationship, or a business relationship, we have to mature to a point where we know when God is in something and when God is not. In fact, God went on to say that some of those things that you have been putting up with in this past year and in these past years, he said you cannot put up with those things in this new year if you want to partner with God and to participate in this great move of God in this new year. He said, I am redeeming the time and it's my will that you make the most of this season and that you seize the moment that you are in. He said, I'm looking for partners. God is looking for partners, not just players. He said, I'm looking for partners. Everybody say partners, not just players. See, partners who are willing to carry out the plan that God has for your life, who's willing to participate and cooperate with what God is doing in the earth. Because understand, God is only obligated to his plan for our lives. Not all that other stuff that we bring before God, things that we made up and just laid on the table and asked God to bless. God said, I'm not obligated to all that. Jesus was a partner with heaven because he understood and he embraced the plan and the agenda that God had for him in the earth. Jesus was a partner. You see, Jesus was connected to heaven. He was in the earth. But he was connected and he was tied to heaven. So wherever you saw Jesus, the reason that it was something so different about him, my brother, is because he was connected to heaven. His agenda was God's agenda. So God looks for men and women who are willing to partner, who are willing to connect with heaven for the sake of the kingdom. Partners he can use in a moment's notice. See, God needs people he can use in a moment's notice. People that he can say, go there, say this, do that, give this, who are willing to sacrifice for the kingdom's sake. 
And God obligates himself. He ties himself. He connects himself to true partners in the earth. How many of you know that God is a God of incentives? He's a God of rewards. He's a God who has a bonus plan. In fact, in the book of Jeremiah, look at Jeremiah 31 and 16. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 16. God is a God of incentives. He's a God of rewards, and he rewards those who he's in partnership with. Amen. <coughs> Jeremiah 31 and 16. And when you get there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, read it with me. Thus saith the Lord. Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears. Why? God is a God of rewards. He's a God of incentives. And so because God is looking for and he's making partners in the earth, he is redeeming the time and he's restoring the years. God is giving someone a fresh start. Not just a second chance or a third chance, because you've had a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, but God said, I'm giving people a fresh start in 2019. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, money that you've thrown away, wasted on sick and twisted lifestyles, running here and then turning around and running there, Time wasted on bad relationships that didn't go anywhere. Oh, I'm getting a few hand claps. <laughs> Money wasted on business deals, bad investments. See, sometimes we invest in things and you might think it's a good investment and maybe at the time it looked good and then you end up looking at this thing and you say, I have just wasted my time and I've wasted my money. Well, God says, I want to give you in one year what it would take you five years to recover and to accomplish in your life. Amen. So I understand that for the partners and the participators, there are some things that you're going to accomplish in this first quarter. Other people are going to accomplish some things in one month, somebody else in a single day that you couldn't have accomplished otherwise because the word of the Lord is spoken unto you and you receive it. Somebody need to catch it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the word is mine. In one day. One day. Sometimes all it takes is an hour. Amen. Hallelujah. But we've got to cooperate with God in 2019. Uh -uh, you just can't keep doing your own thing. You've got to cooperate with God. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. I've, got I've got to cooperate with God. Cooperate with God. Now, on last week, I told you what cooperating with God looks like. It means that you will pray to God. Go ahead, then preach it for me. Number two, partner with God. And then number three, participate in the move of God. I shared with you on last week my testimony. I shared with you how that when I went home to be with my family and I, I, I ministered there at the funeral, one of my greatest concerns, Pastor Michael, was that I hadn't spent the time and I'm not able to spend the time with my family that I really want to. That's a big concern of mine. Because there are a lot of youth in my family and young people that I want to minister to and to share with and to pray for and to be there for. But auntie hasn't been able to be there for them. But I'll tell you what. On that day, in less than an hour, I was able to lead about 25 to 30 young people and old people to Jesus Christ. I did in what our God accomplished through me in one hour what it would have taken me years to accomplish. 
That's what this year will look like as we cooperate with God. God wants to restore some things to you. God wants to give you some things back that you have lost. And it might not be the same thing, but you can know that it will be better because that's the God we serve. Somebody stand to your feet and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say glory to God. Tell the Lord, say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever you want to do in me. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, sit down, y'all. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. God is going to help somebody make up for lost time. Lost wages. Because he's a God of multiplication. Hallelujah. Because let's be real with ourselves. Sometimes you just got to be real with yourself. Some of you have lost a lot of time. A lot of time. A lot of energy. Circling the same situation circling around that same situation. And how many of you recall in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3 when God told Moses and the children of Israel, are you there? Make sure your neighbor's there because I want you to see it. Make sure I'm not making up anything. God told Moses and the children of Israel. In fact, in verse 2, it says, And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain how long, long enough. how long? long enough. some of you have been circling around the same situation or the same kind of situation how long, long and then god told him he says look turn you northward in other words head in a different direction at least At least head in a different direction. Do something different. Go a new way. Try another path. You have been stuck in the same old, same old, stifled in defeat. And saying, oh God, oh God, oh God. God said, uh-uh, turn north. You've been missing the new thing. Some of you have been missing the new way, the new experiences, the new people, the appointed people that God has trying to send your way and put on your path. Look at what God told Moses in, in verse 4. He said, command thou the people, saying, ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau. There are some coasts God's going to cause you to pass through which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. But look at what he told Moses. This is very important. He says, take you good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them. There are some things, some places, some coast that you're going to see. It may be a business coast. How many of you are following me? It may be a people coast. But God says that there are some things that I'm going to take you by, take you through. You can look over there, but don't meddle with it. Not if you want the things restored. Not if you want this prophetic word to come to pass in your life. He says if you see it, just because you see something don't mean that it's yours. See, it's important. I'm, I'm, I listen to me. It is important to be able to see in this year. Because when God is doing great things, when God is opening up great opportunities, you need to be able to see. Otherwise, you'll jump on something real quick. How many of you know what I'm, how many of you ever, I've jumped on things so quick when God wasn't even, didn't have that for me, Brother Larry. That's why we have to watch and pray. But if you want to see the promises of God come to pass in your life, there are some things that you can't meddle with. And, and, and if you want to see them come to pass sooner than later, it's going to be important for you to cooperate with God and walk in his word. If you don't want to miss it this time around. How many times have you missed it? When God was trying to restore to you, give you something, and you missed it. 
You missed it because you refused to cooperate with God. And so God told us we had to do what? We've got to lay a foundation. You've got to get this. You've got to do what? Make sure the person knows next door. If you're going to cooperate with God, number one, you've got to. Then and in the move of God. Because as you pray and you partner with God for purpose and you participate in his move, you open up great windows of opportunity in the earth for your life. When you pray and partner and participate with God, heaven releases to you harvest, help, and hearing. Did you hear me? When you pray, when you partner, when you participate with God, with the move of God in the earth, then heaven releases to those that are paying attention help, harvest, and hearing. Help, harvest, and hearing. Come on and say it. Help, harvest, and hearing. You get the angels involved in your earth realm assignment. You get the angels involved in your success and in your destiny because prayer causes you to hear better. It causes you to see things that other people are afraid to see. I like to say this. The reason that we have had the amount of success that we have is because we're not afraid to see. Some people are afraid to see. It's like, oh no, that's too big. I, I, no, God can't do that. When I was praying this week, down on my knees, praying in the spirit, crying out to God, I saw, and not in the visible realm, but on the canvas of my imagination, Pastor Michael, I began to see angels just stirred, a number that I couldn't even number, stirred for assignment, stirred to go forth and do battle on behalf of the church and the people in the church. And so I began to cry out and say, go, go, go. God began to give me names. I began to call on the angels of God to go forth because when you pray, partner and participate you see and you hear what other people are afraid of some people are afraid of their imagination but how many of you know that God taught us to dream and to imagine good things hallelujah hallelujah some of you have been fighting battles and this is what the spirit said to me he said some people have been fighting battles that are too big for them they're too big, but they're not too big for God. Amen. You've been fighting things that are too big for you, but they are not too big for God. And when you pray, you begin to release the angels. Angels look for people who are praying. They look for those who would dare to pray and to call out to God. See, when you begin to pray, what looked like a huge mountain becomes a molehill in the sight of God. Amen. See, understand that there's purpose in prayer. You are not losing time when you pray. You're not wasting your time. The reason that a lot of people don't pray is because they say, I don't have time. The reason that a lot of people don't pray, listen to me, is because you say, I don't have time. And you may not say it out of your mouth, but you don't do it because you don't have time. You've got to get out to work. You've got to go and do what you do. But when you pray, things begin to change and shift in your life. I have never felt what I feel right now. The anointing, the word, the feeling that I have right now is because I see my future. I see what's ahead of me. And guess what? I'm not afraid to see the big things that God has in store. Because when you pray, you begin to see what others don't see. You're not wasting time when you pray. You are, in fact, redeeming the time. Listen, 
does not the Bible tell us in the book of Psalms 107 and 20 that he sent his word and healed them? You said, how do I redeem the time when I pray? Because you can send the word. The Bible says that God's word is spirit and it's life. When you speak the word of God, wherever you send it, it's there immediately. It would take me two and a half hours at least to get to Dallas by plane. But I can send the word and the word is there immediately prospering in the thing that I send it to. I'm telling you, if some of you would be sending the word into your job, you'd have the promotion that you've been asking for. You'd have the finances that you needed because you would send the word and the word goes before you and opens door. The Bible says, so is my word that go forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing where unto I send it. If some of you, you would just go ahead and pray, you would have been married. <laughs> Hallelujah! Because when you pray, guess what? The eyes of your understanding is enlightened. You'll see what others miss, what other people pass by and step over. You'll see it. Some people pass by their blessing, step over it, don't see it. But when you pray, you'll go into fields and reap in fields, Pastor Jewel, that other people pass up. How many of you remember Ruth? Ruth went into Boaz's field and she reaped a harvest. She got the king. Why? Because she went into a field that other people passed up. She was willing to glean behind the reapers because God will show you, oh, go on into that field. Other people walk by it. God will say, you go into it. You go in there, I've got something I want to give you there. I have a harvest for you to reap in that field. I'm restoring some things to you. The way that God restores is not necessarily the way that you would restore. Come on. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I need to pray. Say, God is restoring to me the years. Do you know that when you pray, that confusion dries up. Some of you are so confused. I share with you on last week, you're so confused. It's like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do. When you pray, confusion dries up. Things and situations where you were perplexed and confused. In fact, some people you have uh, in, in your life are full of confusion. You're surrounded with people who are confused just like you. Am I telling the truth? Come on, tell the truth. Mama used to say, and shame the devil. You confused and the people that you're surrounded with are confused too. But when you pray, God says, I'll remove and cause the confusion to dry up and I will bring you out of shame. Amen. Look at Isaiah 61 and 7. We looked at it last week and I want you to look at it again because God wants you to get this word down in your spirit. The book of Isaiah chapter 61. Praise the Lord. When you get to verse 7, say amen. amen. Let's read it. Ye shall have what? And for? What will happen? Therefore? And everlasting joy shall be unto them. When you pray and partner and participate with God, God will flood your mind with wisdom for new ideas, new levels, open doors, new people, new partnerships. This is important. I have said this before and I repeat it, that there are people you are praying for 
and there are people that are praying just like you and they can't wait to meet you. There are some people who can't wait to get to you. It's been appointed by God. It's in your destiny. They are destined to come into your life and help you. They are looking for you. And as you pray, get this, they are being drawn and attracted to you. Hallelujah! See, somebody's scared to receive that. Oh, people get scared of the word. There are people. They are destined to be in your life. They're supposed to be there. That's why we pray. See, we get the angels involved. We get the angels moving, moving people about. I'm all connected here. I might need your help, Elder Glenn. Maybe. I think I'm good. Thank you, Elder Glenn. <laughs> there are people God has set up and appointed to be there for you. Maybe it's a partnership. Maybe it's a romantic relationship. Maybe it's a business relationship. Maybe they're supposed to fund you, fund your business. I don't know, but you won't know until you pray and partner and participate in this move of God in the earth. God's trying to get something to you, but you have to cooperate. Say cooperate. cooperate. Look, God says in Isaiah 48 and 3, he says, I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. They appeared Suddenly, and they came to pass. You'll look up and you'll say, how did you get in my life? Baby, where you been? What took you so long? But God will do it how? Suddenly, he restores to you the years. Did you ever know or think? She said, okay, she didn't even know what I was going to say. Yes, she did, because the Holy Spirit revealed it to her. He revealed it. God's trying to get something to you. How can he restore the years if you're not cooperating with him? It's not just about God. See, I, can, can, I, can I just share something with you? It's not about God just dropping it into your lap. You've got to go and get it. You've got to pursue, overtake, and recover. Oh, there's a time to pursue. And in 2019, this is that time to pursue. To pursue. Say, I will pursue, overtake, and recover all. Look. Look, this thing opened up to me, Pastor Michael. That's why I've been getting up praying, praying throughout the day, Elder Renee, because things are coming my way. Things are coming. There are things that are coming your way. Some things God has already done for you, but he wants to do more. God didn't stop because he did that. that. That was just a small thing. But not compared to what God is going to do, he says, I'm going to restore to you the years. Think about the areas of your life where the devil just ate up, just came in and just began to suck the life out of, your, out of your life. Think about it. Where is it? Where he just came in and started sucking the life out of you, sucking the life out of your marriage, sucking the life out of your relationships, sucking the life out of your business. Think about the things that you've lost. How long would it take you to recover and get all of that back. Holy Spirit said, I want to do for you. Now, he said one year, but here's what I'm saying. It didn't take God a good hour to what to do, what he did. Now, see, that was a miracle, Pastor Michael and Elder Renee. You were there. You were a witness. You saw it. That could have taken me. 
till today, and I still may not have done that, but because I was cooperative with heaven and cooperated with God and what he wanted me to do in just one hour. If he did that in an hour, what can he do for you in 30 days? Over the next 30 days, what can he do for you? You're talking about one quarter. What can he do for you? What can God do for you in this quarter? If you will pray, partner, and participate. Hey, she's saying it like she knows something. He'll send you help, harvest, and a hearing. You got to hear. You got to see in order to get the harvest. I, I, I'll tell you about Ruth next week. I said I wasn't going to even get close to her today because it would take too much time. But Ruth went into the field and gleaned behind the reapers. Some of you are walking a step behind the reapers, but I tell you in 2019, not only are you going to move up with the reapers, you're going to step past the reapers, and you're going to get the harvest that God had for you from the beginning because God is obligated to what he said to you. He's under obligation. Lift up your hands and say, God is under obligation to his promises, his plan in my life. Oh, my God. Woo. Oh, my God. Say help. Say harvest. Say hearing. Say, I hear, you, I hear you, Father. Send the harvest. Send the harvest. He said, the latter rain and the farmer. Oh, my God. See, I got I to gotta hear him so I know when to stop, Pastor. Woo. I got to know when to stop. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands in the presence of the Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you promised us in your word. You said, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm have eaten up, the caterpillar the palm of worm. God, all those areas of our life that have suffered loss, God, relationships that went sour and business deals and businesses that went under. And God, you have so much more. And because you're ob under obligation to your word and because you are a rewarder of them who do diligently seek you. You have come in the power of I am that I am to confirm the feeble hands and to strengthen the weak knees and to say to us that you have heard our prayers. Oh God, we thank you that our prayers have brought us into the season of restoration and the promises of God awakening before us. God, we thank you and we praise you that the hurt and pain and grief and all of those things that have kept us from moving forward as we ought to, that in this year, in this moment, as we seize the moment, as we lay hold to the promises of God, we will stand up to a brand new day, a brand new anointing 
and we will see the salvation of the Lord in this hour. So right now I speak to the atmosphere and I command the atmosphere to release those things that God has spoken and promised in the lives of your people. God, as they stand before you, their hearts open to you, their ears listening to the voice of God. Father, you said, I will train your ear to hear as the learned. So, Father, we're listening for what you would speak to us in this season. And we will not look to the left or to the right, but we will be strong, strategic, and we will focus on the purpose that you have before us. And we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. And let the church say amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Oh, somebody ought to give God some praise. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say, restore to me, God. Hallelujah. 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 Stay focused. Diana, be strong. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Because the Lord your God is coming after you to do, to reward, to restore, to recover things. Years. God says, better than ever before. Will I do it? Will I do it? Because your heart belongs to God. Your heart belongs to God. God sees you. He's got his eye on you. And you know what? I'm going to call you Ruth. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You're going to glean in the field that is going to yield you the greatest harvest in 2019. Hallelujah! 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 God is willing, but are you ready? Are you ready, son? Are you ready for whatever God would have you to do? Set your heart towards God. I want you to pray like you've never prayed before. Can Pastor Ronnie say a quick prayer over you? Because God just told me what he pray over you, God's going to answer. I want you to say a quick prayer over him and over his life and his business. Come on, meet him, Pastor Ronnie. And I want you to pray. Pray over Robbie's life. God's going to bless him and honor him for steps that he has taken in Christ. God's going to reward him. And I want you to release it in Jesus' name. Come on, stretch your hands. Father, as we lift up Robert this morning, Lord, we just uh, thank you, Father, that his way is already made, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. That you've gone before him and you've made the crooked places yes. straight, uh, straight. You've continually been his rear regard. You undergird him, Father, with your uncompromised word of God. Yes. You overshadow him with mercy and grace. And our prayer for him is that uh, the doors of heaven and the gateways of heaven will be open in his yes. behalf, Father. Yes. And you'll continually be his rear guard yes. and rear reward. We pray, Father, that his eyes are attentive to what he sees in and through the spirit, that his ears are attentive to what he hears, Father, yes. in Jesus' precious name, in the spiritual realm. And, Father, that he already has the victory in the mighty name of Jesus and that he pays attention to detail yes. in and through the word of God, Lord. We thank you. We pray you we glorify you and we send them out with expectation Hallelujah. this day in Jesus precious in name Jesus name amen let the church say amen let the church say amen hallelujah 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 let the church say amen let the
let the people say amen. Praise you, Father. I hear the Lord, and I'm going to stop because I, I, I'm not going to even get into next week. But in Jesus' name, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you died today, are you 100% sure 